Good morning, Bernard. Good morning, Dr. Priscilla. It is so good to have you back. I've missed having you in class. Did you have a great vacation? Uh, yes, I had a small days uh, with my grandson, mm -hmm. uh, Cruz. Okay, wonderful. We are uh, famous. Well, I'm glad that you're back. Today, we're going to read a part of President Barack Obama's inaugural address. This yes. is his first inaugural address, and um, so it was several years ago. If you're ready, you may begin. If you're ready? When you are ready, you may begin. Yes. yes, I am ready. By President Barack Hussein Obama, my fellow citizens, I stand here today humbled to the task before us, grateful to, for the trust you've bestowed, mindful of the sacrifice borne by your ancestors. I thank Mr. Bush for his service to our nations, as well as the generosity and cooperation he has shown throughout his transition. Throughout? Throughout? throughout this transition. 44 Americans have not taken the presidential oath. The wars have been spoken during rising tides of prosperity and the still waters of, pie, of peace. Yet, every so often, the oath is taken amidst gathering clouds and raging storms. At these moments, America has carried on, not simply because of the skill of, or vision of those in high office, but because we, the people, have remained faithful to the ideals of our forebears and through to our funding documents. Okay, this is America. America. Okay. So, it has been so it must be with this generation of Americans that we are in the midst of that we are in the midst of the Earth crisis is now well understood. Our nation is at war against a far-reaching network of violence and hatred. Our economy is badly weakened, a consequence of greed and irresponsibility on the part of some but also our collective failure to make our choices and prepare the nation for a new age. Homes have been lost, jobs shed, businesses shuttered, or shuttered, or businesses shuttered, or health, or healthcare is too costly, or schools fell to many and each day brings further evidence that the ways we use energy strengthen our adversaries and threaten our planet. These are the indicators of crisis subjects to data and statistics. Less measurable, but no less profound, is a shaping of confidence across our land a nagging fear that America's decline is inevitable, that the next generation must lower its sights. This is going to be sapping, sapping. It's sapping of confidence. Today, I say to you that the challenges we are face are real. They are serious and there are many. They will not be met easily or in a short span of time. But no, this is, but no, this America, they will be met. On this day, we gather because we have chosen hope over fear, unity of purpose over conflict and disorder, discord. Mm -hmm. on, this, on this day, we come to proclaim an end to the petty grievances and false promises, the recriminations and worn out dogmas that for far too long have strangled our politics, 
strangled. This is going to be strangled. I've strangled our politics. Our politics. Our politics. We remain a young nation. In the words of scripture, the time has come to set aside the childish things. Childish? Childish things. Childish. The time has come to reaffirm our enduring spirit, to choose our better history, to carry forward that precious gift, that noble ID passed on from generation to generation. The God-given promise that are all are equal, all are free, and all deserve a chance to pursue their full measure of happiness. In reaffirming the greatness of our nation, we understand that greatness is never given. It must be earned. 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 It must be earned. Uh, 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 earned. It, it must be earned. Mm -hmm. Our journey has never been one of shortcuts or setting for less. Settling. Settling. Settling, shortcuts or settling for less. It has not been the path for the third heritage, for those that prefer leisure over work, or seek only the pleasures of riches and fame. Rather, it has been the risk takers, the doors, the makers of things, some celebrated, but more often men and women are obscure in their labor, who have carried us the long, rugged path towards prosperity and freedom. Okay, this is doers, doers. What does it mean, doers? To do, to perform, the ones who are acting. Okay. And then carried us up. Carried us up. Mm -hmm. For us, they packed up their few worldly possessions and traveled around across oceans in search of a new life. For us, they toiled in switch shops and slated the west, endured the last the lash of the whip, and plowed the hard earth. For us. They fought and died in places like Concord and Gettysburg, Normandy, and the scan. Okay, let me read this and listen to the ED sound. For us, they packed up their few worldly possessions and traveled across oceans in search of a new life. For us, they toiled in sweatshops and settled the West, endured the lash of the whip, and plowed the hard earth. For us, they fought and died in places like Concord and Gettysburg, Normandy and Quezon. Okay. Okay. Continue. What, what, what is it, Kisan? I think it's just another place. It's a place or a country or... Okay. Time and again, these men and war men struggled and sacrificed and worked till their hands were raw, so that we might live a better life. Live. Live, a better life. This live, live a better life. Live a better life. Live. Raw, raw, so that we might live a better life. Their hands were raw. Raw, ah, raw, ah. Raw, ah. Raw. Their hands were raw, so they might live a better life. Mm -hmm. They saw America as big that the sum of her individual, um, individual ambitions greater than all the differences of birth or wealth or faction. 
this is the journey we continue today. We remain the most prosperous, powerful nation on earth. Our workers are no less productive than when the crisis began. Our minds are no less inventive. Our goods and services no less needed than they were last week or last month or last year. Our capacity remains undiminished. 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 Our capacity remains undiminished. But our times of standing pat, of protesting narrow interests and putting off unpleasant decisions, that time has surely passed. Starting today, we must pick ourselves, ourselves up Dust ourselves off and begin again the war of remaking America. For everywhere we look, there's work to be done. The state of our economy calls for action, bold and swift. And we will act not only to create new jobs, but to lay a new foundation for growth. We will build the roads and bridges, the electric grids and digital lines that feed our commerce and bind us together. We restore science to its rightful place and will technology wonders to raise healthcare quality and lower its cost. We'll harness the sun, we'll harness the sun and the winds and the soil to fuel our cars and runs our factories. And we'll transform our schools and colleges and universities to meet the demands of a new age. All this we can do, all this we will do. No, there are some questions. There are some who question the scale of our ambitions. Okay, this is going to be scale. The scale. scale. So there are some who question the scale of our ambitions. We suggest that our system can't tolerate to many big plans. Their memories are short, for they have forgotten what this country has already done, what free men and women can achieve when imagination is granted to common purpose and necessity to courage. Joined. Is joined. Mm -hmm. What the cynics fail to understand is that the ground has shifted beneath them. That the stale political arguments that have consumed us for so long no longer apply. The question we ask today is not whether our government is too big or too small, but whether it works, whether it helps families find jobs of a decent wage, care their kind at, of at a decent wage, at a decent wage, at a decent wage, care they can't afford, a retirement that is dignified. Where the answer is yes, we intend to move forward. Where the answer is no, programs will end. And those two of us who manage the public's dollar will be held to account, dollars, will be held to account to spend wisely, reform bad habits, and do our business in the light of day, because only then can we restore the vital trust between the people and their governments. Okay. Restore the vital trust. Restore the vital trust between the people and their governments. Okay. Very good reading. Not so many corrections. Yes. Uh, your challenge is the ED words and a few plurals, a few S's were omitted. Other than that, not too bad. Yes. Any questions about what you've read today? No, because I've already read twice mm -hmm. this part of the, the meeting. Mm -hmm. I stop at 10 minutes. Okay. And I intend to read the last part tomorrow. Okay, we'll read the rest tomorrow. 
do you see the pictures formulating in your in your mind's eye as you read what he's saying? Do you actually see an image in your mind as you read? I can't imagine. Uh, yes, perhaps I can do it. Mm -hmm. So when I see, let's go back at the very beginning. My fellow citizens, I stand here today humbled by the task before us. I can just see a, a man just being like, I'm here to serve you. I can see that in my mind's eye. And he talks about the sacrifices borne by our ancestors, black, white, Italian, Jews, whatever. I can just see many people that, has, that have come to America and died for a cause. And um, then he talks about he being the 44th president. Uh, let's see, where's another image uh, that he has? He says that America has carried on not simply because of the skill of vision of those in high office, when he talks about people in high office, he's talking about people in offices as high as the presidential president of the United States. We have, we have hopes and dreams that the people in these places will make things better because that's what our forefathers believed and fought and died for. So it was just an excellent speech uh, for me to listen to. I'm going to stop. Thank you.